Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Today I have four trash to treasure DIYs and I really hope you enjoy them. So let's get started. So I had this book that was missing several pages. I had originally bought it in order to make a floral arrangement for last spring, but I never did anything with the book. So I thought, why not use it today? So the first thing I did was take out several more pages and this time I cut each individual line with my paper cutter. Next, I took some leftover Easter eggs that I had from Dollar Tree that I never used and I started Mod Podging all of the little individual lines on the egg. Now, I didn't do any particular pattern. I just added them on there randomly. I did cut some of the strips in half in order to hide some bare pieces on the egg, but mostly I did use the longer ones. Now, a funny fact about this book is that I never really read it. I just bought it at Dollar Tree for another project and it ended up being about forgiveness. So I thought a lot of the little quotes were actually perfect for Easter. Now for added contrast, I decided to do some of the eggs in jute and I just took some Dollar Tree jute that I had on hand and I just took it around the egg as you see here and I did it very tightly, that way I didn't have any of the green or any color of the egg peek through. Next, I remembered that I had a couple of little pieces of flowers left over from my little cute spring truck sign, and I couldn't really do anything with these because I didn't have enough. So I decided to add these on to the eggs as well. So once the Mod Podge eggs were dry, I took a little bit more of that jute, gave it a couple of turns around the egg and hot glued it on. And then I added one little mini rose to each of the eggs. I also took a leaf from the little bush as well and I cut it to make it a little bit smaller because they were a little bit too large for the eggs and added it on. And that was it for these little Easter eggs. I'm so happy that I was able to use more of those book pages as well as those leftover roses to create something beautiful for Easter. So before I continue with my next DIY, I wanted to say that this video is part of my dear friend Casey over at Coffee With My Sunshine's Trash to Treasure Challenge. She hosts this challenge monthly with a different co-host and she challenges us to create beautiful things out of things we would normally get rid of. So if you haven't checked her out, definitely go do so. Her co-host this month is Julia from The Mug Life DIY and I will have both of their links to their channels in my description box as well as the link to the playlist. Okay, so for my next DIY, I had this little sad tray hanging around the house for a few years now. I had originally bought it at Goodwill and made it over. However, over time, it just wasn't looking good anymore and it wasn't being used. So I thought I would make it over again. That way my husband can use it on his nightstand as a place where he can just put his stuff down at the end of the day. The cool thing about the tray is that it easily comes apart. So once everything was laid out, I took some of my DIY paint from Debbie's Design Diary. If you don't know who she is, she is amazing and she has her own line of paint. Definitely check her YouTube channel out. I've had this paint for a little while and I thought, let's try a DIY with it. And I took her color in Apothecary for this one. The paint is thick and really pigmented, so you only need one coat for this. Once the paint was dry, I took some poster board and added it to the bottom of center where the opening was. I just adhered it with some tape. Thank you. 
And since this was gonna go on my husband's nightstand, I thought I would add one of his favorite quotes. My husband and I are really into movies and love watching them together. And one of our favorite movie series is the John Wick series. And we love his tattoo that says, fortune favors the bold. So I made a decal that was perfect for this. Now this decal, as well as any other ones that you see in future videos and the ones that you see in previous ones will be in my online shop. It's still a work in progress, but I'm going to go ahead and have the link to it in the description box below so that you guys can check it out. Next, I took Debbie's white wax and with my finger, I just applied it to several areas. That way it looked like it was aged. I added the glass and reassembled the tray. I did add a little bit more of the green paint so I can cover up those little screws. I added a little bit more of that white wax throughout the exterior. Then I applied Debbie's clear wax in order to seal it and I just used a lint-free cloth. And that was it for this DIY. I really do love how this turned out. I love that soft green color to brighten up any space, but I'm sure the Latino engineer will appreciate the quote. All right, so you may recognize this from my last Crash to Treasure. It was a coaster that I did for a previous Hurricane DIY. However, I used that little hurricane for something else, and then I had the little coaster left over. However, I didn't want coasters. So I wanted to add onto this and create another DIY. So I took this and added even more nautical rope. I wanted to create a basket for this little plant that I had in my sunroom that was looking really sad because it never got a plant pot. It's basically been in the little black pot that you get from the nursery. So I got it to as wide as I needed it and then I added a couple of leftover popsicle sticks in between the rope to add a little bit more stability. Now this didn't quite work the way I wanted to but it did add a little bit more stiffness to the bottom of it and I'll show you how. I spaced the popsicle sticks evenly and then I started to work my way up on the rope, adding a wall to it. And basically the popsicles were supposed to help hold the wall kind of together. However, I noticed it started bringing the rope inwards instead of just straight up. So I cut them with my little crafting shears that I love so much. And I left them in there because it did create kind of like a stiffer wall at the bottom, but I just didn't need the entire popsicle stick. And then I just started working my way up the basket. When I finally finished all of my entire nautical rope, I realized that it still wasn't tall enough to cover the little plant pot. So since I couldn't go out, I had to get creative. And I also had some white rope left over from a previous project. So I decided I'm just gonna use this until it's done and over with. And lucky enough, it was enough to cover the pot. And so now my cute little plant in the sunroom has a much better little pot to sit in. Not bad I think for using whatever I had on hand and then being extra resourceful and trying to finish the project. Hopefully in the future when things get a little bit more normal, I can go out, get a little bit more nautical rope and create some handles for this. All right, so for the final DIY, I had this little frame. It was probably from Dollar Tree. I have no idea. I've had it forever and I've never used it. So now is as good a time as any. So I took it apart. 
It wasn't in perfect shape since it did have a chunk missing off of one of its corners, but it will make do. And I also used some scrap paper that I had on hand from Hobby Lobby. So I cut that scrapbook paper to fit the interior cardboard. Then I created a decal with some inspiring words that I believe really resonate with these times. I had originally wanted to add it to the printed sign of the scrapbook, however I didn't really like the way it was looking so I just flipped it over and used the back blank side. I did put it back together, however the frame was looking really cheap to me, so I thought I would share how you can transform any inexpensive frame into one that looks like wood. First thing you're going to need is some white chalk paint and what I use is home decor chalk paint in the color white Adirondack and I gave this frame two full coats for full coverage. The next thing you're going to need is some of Rust-Oleum's chalked aged glaze and I'll make sure to link it in the box below. You will also need a chip brush. You're going to dip it into the can and then remove any excess that might drip. Now the way this aged glaze is supposed to work, you're supposed to brush it on and wipe it off to give any painted surface an antique look. However, if you don't wipe it off and you do long, straight, even strokes, you will see that it will start turning to look like actual wood grain. And I'll show you a close up. You want to try and cover as much of the white as possible and again do long even strokes. Now this can chip off so you do want to cover it with a polycrylic or a wax in order to seal it. And after that was dry I added my decal back and the frame looked so much better. You'd never be able to tell that this was a cheap black plastic frame. And the wonderful thing about this is that you can use this for any piece in your home, whether it's a piece of furniture, more frames, anything. And of course this decal will also be available in my shop. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to get more inspiration. So I'd love to know which one of these Trash to Treasures was your favorite. Check out the description box below for the playlist for more inspiration. I have the products I used in my description box as well. Also a link to my little online shop. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, adios.